what is going on guys, my name is Jack Silkstone. Welcome to a brand new series on the channel where throughout the month of December we're going to be taking a look back at the past decade at the Fort Park Resort. So, in today's episode we're heading right back to the start of the past decade, 2010. As you can see, the Fort Park Resort was a very different place back in 2010. After a record-breaking year in 2009 with the opening of Saw the Ride, Fort Park went straight into the new decade with an announcement of what they said would be the world's most extreme horror attraction, Saw Alive. New for 2010, Saw Alive, the world's most extreme live-action horror maze, and Saw the Ride at Fort Park. Saw Alive was announced as being a year-round live-action horror maze which was to be built on the Thorpe Bell and moved to Saw Island. Looking back at forums from back in 2010, there were already rumours and speculation that the Fort Bell at the time was filled with holes and starting to sink. Saw Alive did open to great reviews in March 2010 though. At the time, the electrical room in the maze actually featured a real electric fence which was then later removed, apparently due to the fact that it took people too long to pass through this room as they were scared they were going to get an electric shock. Also, the bathtubs that are now in the maze queue line were actually originally in the bathroom scene of the maze, but were later removed and replaced as they had become too damaged. So with Saw Alive being the brand new addition to the park for 2010, an attraction that sadly left the park in 2010 was the Slippery Serpent which was previously located in Octopus Gardens. Octopus Gardens was a family area located right in the centre of Fort Park, featuring several children's rides, including, at one point, the Rocky Express. Shortly after the removal of the Slippery Serpent in 2010, it was then announced that the whole of Octopus Gardens would be closing mid-season so that construction could begin on a new family water ride that would be coming to the park the following year. As soon as the deconstruction of Octopus Gardens began, plans and marketing material were then released for Storm Surge. The 64-foot spinning raft ride, which was to be transported from the recently acquired by Merlin American theme park, Cypress Gardens, the following year. So, those were all of the physical things that took place at Fort Park in 2010. But, potentially, the biggest thing that happened that year was the submission of Fort Park's medium-term development plan to the Runnymede Borough Council in July of that year. This plan gave a rough idea of everything that Fort Park were planning to do between 2010 and 2016. As documented on this plan, Fort Park identified three locations where they were looking to add two new roller coasters in this six year period. The first of these roller coasters, which was planned for 2012, ultimately became the Swarm, which was located at point C. The second plan roller coaster was due to open in 2015 and was to be located at point A. However, as I'm sure you are all aware, this never went ahead. Another major part of this plan was for four to five new flat rides to be added to the park between 2010 and 2016 at any of the nine locations shown on this map. In reality, however, only two of these locations had rides built on them, Storm Surge and King Pig's Wild Hog Dodgems. In addition to these major ride plan developments, this plan also suggested a brand new open air stage to be built next to Stealth in 2012, a refurbished entrance to the park, a refurbishment to the arena, and an extension to Pizza Hut, Burger King, several of the shops on park, and the Nemesis Inferno workshop, as well as the construction of a brand new fast track booth. As I'm sure many of you are aware, Many of these things in this plan did end up happening, however, as I'm sure you're also aware, many of them also never came to happen. One final thing to mention was towards the very end of 2010, people first started finding leaks as to what would be Fort Park's next big roller coaster, which at the time was simply known as Project LC12. But we'll discuss that more in the next episode, where we will take a look at everything that happened at Fort Park in 2011. We start this episode on a slightly sinister note, as during construction in early 2011 of the park's brand new water ride, Storm Surge, there were reportedly several sightings of the ghost of a headless monk. 
This ghost had apparently appeared after workers had disturbed an ancient burial ground whilst excavating the new ride site. Workers complained that objects would randomly move around, that they felt like they were being watched over their shoulder, and that they would suddenly be hit by a very cold feeling. Now whilst this was almost definitely a publicity stunt, Fort Park and Monk's Walk in particular have had several ghost stories and sightings in the past, so who knows, there could be some truth behind this story. Even with these ghostly happenings, Storm Surge did open on the 12th of March 2011 and was advertised with a brand new TV advert. What is this? A spinning fool? <laughs> well my friend, for thrills, get a load of these. Yeah, he's spinning faster, but without water, it's not Storm Surge. He's down! Storm Surge, you at Thorpe Park, thrill out. Alongside the opening of Storm Surge, the Fort Park Mega Store also received a refurbishment. Unfortunately, however, due to the size of Storm Surge, fans complained that this whole area now felt very cramped and had become an eyesore. I personally am still annoyed they covered up that beautiful sightline of X No Way Out. So with Storm Surge being the new addition to the park this year, 2011 saw the removal of two attractions. The first of which being Time Voyagers, which is a film that played in the park's 4D cinema. The story of this film followed two robots that went on a mission to see why many explorers had gone missing in a strange pyramid. The second attraction that left the park in 2011 was the beloved Canada Creek Railway. After the closure of Fort Farm in 2006, the Canada Creek Railway had been operating a circular track around Canada Creek, where Platform 15 is now located ever since. However, apparently due to high running costs and its dwindling popularity, the Canada Creek Railway carried its last ever passengers in 2011. This steam powered train is now known by many as the Sleeper Express, due to its inclusion within the park's Fright Nights horror maze, Platform 15. Despite all of these new and removed rides, 2011 will likely be remembered by most for the park's marketing campaign for their brand new roller coaster, The Swarm. In April, Fort Park set up a brand new website called lc12.net with multiple teasers and strange videos being posted to the site. At the park itself, posters and flyers stating the end is coming, uncover the truth and lc12.net were posted everywhere. There was also a strange character that roamed the park known as Les Coogan who had warned guests of a government conspiracy and an alien attack. Eventually on August the 1st the name of the new ride was revealed to be the Swarm. This name reveal was followed by even more marketing videos and even more Les Coogan rants. The Swarm's marketing campaign for this year was completed with one of the best marketing stunts the park have ever done. To end the park's firework display, they lifted a fire engine above the lake, and after warning of the Swarm's arrival, they then blew it up. Attack imminent in five, four, three, two. All year whilst this marketing for the Swarm had been taking place, the ride's construction had been happening on its brand new island at a steady rate. The only other notable thing that happened in 2011 was Fort Park's reapplication for a permanent hotel complex to the Runnymede Council in June. This hotel complex was due to be three storeys tall, complete with 250 rooms, a bar, restaurant, swimming pool, and leisure and conference facilities. It was to be located to the right of the park's entrance and was going to have its own water boat shuttle straight to the park. Later on in the year, this application was granted. However, as I'm sure you're all aware, this grand hotel never came to happen. As I'm sure many of you may know, 2012 saw the opening of one of Fort Park's most iconic roller coasters, The Swarm. Construction of the new ride and area continued on from 2011 over the park's close season. 
A lot of the swarm's theming was constructed at Merlin Studios North, which is located near Alton Towers, and then transported down to Fort Park once complete. A key part of the ride's theming, the large aeroplane located near the ride's first drop, was actually a real aeroplane that just a few weeks before being put in place at Fort Park, was still in service. Although this plane was stripped down and cut in half once put in place at Forp, it still actually includes two toilets, fully working doors and a trolley storage rack. Looking back at plans and concepts for the Swarm, the ride could have turned out very different to how it is today, with many different ride vehicles being proposed as well as completely different roller coaster models altogether. It's believed that Fort Park were looking into installing either a dive machine or a first of its kind 4D wing rider from BMM before they finally decided on the UK's first and only wing rider roller coaster. The portfolio for the Swarm details many design aspects of the ride. For example, the LC12 codename used during the ride's construction and marketing was in reference to the long count Mayan calendar which predicted the world would end in 2012. The marketing section of this portfolio also documents many of the things we discussed in the previous episode. Interestingly, as you can see there were ideas for a 2013 attraction which would expand on the Swarm story similar to how Saw Alive opened a year after Saw the Ride. One particularly interesting part of the Swarm's marketing campaign was the creation of intentional controversy. This was particularly clear with the marketing stunt of claiming the ride's test dummies had had their limbs amputated whilst testing the ride, a stunt that Merlin would stay well clear of nowadays. After a lengthy period of construction though, the ride had its first ever test run on the 17th of January. Nice. And with the ride's marketing process slowly coming to an end, the park began releasing these short form teaser videos. And then to top it all off, the ride's official TV advert was launched. The Swarm then opened to guests for the first time on March 15th, 2012. Swarm Island was full of army officials, conspiracy theorists, and of course, the man himself, Les Coogan. Yumi at Six, the band that wrote the ride's song, had their own stage and performed on Swarm Island all day. Looking back at this video from Mushroom Productions, it was great to see people's very first reactions to the ride. Hello, well I think that Swarm is an absolutely brilliant, fantastic experience here at Fort Park, and I will give it a 4 out of 5 stars. It's a brilliant ride, but I didn't have the urge to go back on it again after. 4 stars from me. Big up Sean there. The ride then went on to get great reviews from the park's visitors over the rest of the year, and still to this day. In August 2012, despite being granted permission for a large-scale lakeside hotel the previous year, Fort Park went ahead and submitted planning permission for a temporary overnight solution in collaboration with Snoozebox. This development was to be called the Crash Pad and was planned to open the following year in order to test the market conditions in anticipation of a large-scale hotel being built in the future. Elsewhere on Park in 2012, there were a few brand changes to the park's food stalls and then, at the end of the 2012 season, X No Way Out gave its last ever ride before it was then re-themed to X over the winter period. So there we have 2012 at Fort Park. The 2013 Fort Park season was kicked off with a bang with one of Fort Park's oldest roller coasters, X No Way Out, being refurbished 
to X. Where previously you would travel backwards in the pitch black on X No Way Out, this refurb gave the new ride a lease of life by having riders face forwards and adding lasers and dance music to the famous pyramid. Along with this reverb came brand new trains, a new soundtrack, and now guests were batched outside of the pyramid rather than queuing inside. Nowadays, a reverb like this would likely be the big addition to the park for that year. However, back in 2013, this change wasn't massively advertised by the park at all. Instead, in January of 2013, Fort Park began giving out cryptic clues across their social media channels about a big reveal that was coming soon. The first of these clues was, are you brave enough to experience the evolution? The second clue being, the sting is in the tail. And then, Fort Park posted this photo. Now, by this point, fans of the park had already figured it out, but Fort Park then confirmed on January the 21st that for the 2013 season, the back two rows of the swarm would be turned around so that you could brave the ride backwards. The swarm. Now, brave it backwards. New for 2013 at Thorpe Park. Along with this change, it was also announced that a new near-miss element would be added to the ride in the form of a giant billboard. These announcements led to mixed reactions with many people stating that the back row of the swarm was their favourite row, so they didn't want it to be changed. Also, people began questioning why a giant billboard was next to a church on a small remote island, but ultimately, Brave It Backwards seemed to go down well and I think everyone would agree that the billboard vastly improves the Swarm's ride experience. Another new addition for the 2013 season at the park was the temporary pop-up hotel, the Crash Pad, which was made in collaboration with Snoozebox. The Crash Pad was to be built using modified shipping containers and as stated in the park's planning submission the previous year, was largely just testing the waters for a large-scale permanent hotel. With this being the park's first ever delve into accommodation, they introduced a lot more evening events this year, including Ministry of Sound club nights, roller discos, gigs and comedy nights, all as an incentive for people to spend the night at the island. Ultimately, the crash pad was a success, and so on July the 3rd, Fort Park applied for planning permission to cut ties with Snoozebox and build their own temporary hotel the following year. This new hotel would include more rooms than the crash pad did and would last from 2014 to 2024. There were three main concepts of what this next temporary hotel would be like. The boardwalk, the stealth ship, and the shark. Ultimately, as I'm sure you're aware, Fort Park went with the shark, leading to plans for the Fort Shark Hotel. So there we have all of the new additions to the Fort Park Resort for 2013. 2014 was a milestone year for the Fort Park Resort as the island went through a huge rebrand. The park transitioned away from the fathead characters of previous years and also dropped the tagline of the nation's thrill capital and began moving towards a more family friendly style of branding. With this came a refurbished entrance area in which a large screen that still remains above the turnstiles today was installed. A major reason for this rebrand was to show that the Fort Park Resort wasn't just for the teenage thrill seeker market to enjoy, but instead for everyone. And as a result, at the start of 2014, the park announced their brand new area, Angry Birds Land. This area was due to be a retheme of the central part of Amity, with the land's centerpiece being the world's first Angry Birds 4D animation experience. This was to be a 10 minute Angry Birds film, which would incorporate high impact special effects in a movie theater surrounding. Along with this, a brand new Dodgems attraction would be installed and the park's drop tower, Detonator, would be refurbished to fit in with the Angry Birds theme. In anticipation for this new land, Fort Park put on a large Easter event, with Easter egg hunts taking place every day, as well as a Brainiac live show, which took place in Ranger County in The Hideaway. After many months of construction, Angry Birds Land then opened on the 24th of May, 2014. It's even got its own wildlife. With new Angry Birds Land and 4D cinema experience, 
This is Thor Park Resort, an island like no other. Another new addition to the park in 2014 was the Coke Super Freeze unit, which allowed customers to purchase their very own self-freezing Coke. All you had to do was sip, flip, and watch it freeze. With all of these new additions, 2014 did sadly see the removal of one of Fort Park's classic rides, this being Chief Ranger's Carousel. This fan favourite ride had been at the park since 1994 and left many fans upset when the park announced its closure. Along with the carousel, the park's arena was also due to close this year. With these two attractions being next to each other, this led to many fans speculating as to what would be filling the space that they would leave behind. This was answered towards the end of 2014 with the submission of a planning application for a unique new themed attraction, How's the Minute Building, which was scheduled to open two years later in 2016. As mentioned in the previous episode, 2014 saw the opening of the Fort Shark Hotel, replacing the Crash Pad. Sticking with the theme of accommodation, also in 2014, Fort Park once again submitted planning permission for their infamous large-scale lakeside hotel. This planning document went into a lot more detail than previous documents, suggesting that the park were very serious about making it happen this time. They even outlined dates and deadlines of a hotel's construction. In summer 2016, groundwork was due to commence, then construction was to take place up until autumn 2017, and then the hotel was due to open in the spring of 2018. The 2015 Fort Park season kicked off earlier than normal this year due to the park's February half term event. This event took place from the 14th to the 22nd of February and saw the return of Brainiac Live to the park. As well as this, Stealth, Swarm and Angry Birds Land were all open as part of this event. When the main season then began on the 12th of March, there were a few minor changes to the resort, including the opening of Finn's Bar and Grill and the re-theme of Pizza Hut to Inferno Pizza and Pasta. The main addition to the park in 2015 was the brand new I'm a Celebrity maze. There's an island not so far away, an island with its own landmarks, weather conditions, and now its very own jungle, where you can face your very own Bush took a trial. Take on the Chamber of Horrors. Get hands on in the holy moly wall. And conquer the celebrity cyclone to be crowned king or queen of the jungle. The I'm a Celebrity Maze comes to Thor Park Resort, an island like no other. This maze experience was located in the building previously occupied by horror mazes such as the Asylum and Studio 13. This maze would include several jungle trials featuring apparent 56 mile an hour winds, moving walls and trees, and innovative technology to simulate the feeling of being covered in bugs. This new attraction officially opened on the 27th of March 2015. An unfortunate thing that happened in 2015, due to the Smiler crash at Sister Park Alton Towers, was that Fort Park shut their Gerslauer Eurofighter roller coaster, saw the ride, whilst it was inspected to ensure the ride was being ran in accordance with new safety regulations. A brand new event that came to the park in 2015 was Island Beats. Throughout the summer of 2015, several large UK artists performed on a stage built in Lost City. Some of these artists included The Vamps, Ella Eyre, Rizzle Kicks, Professor Green and Connor Maynard. Eight weeks of world-class rides and live music every day. Thought Park Island Beats, a summer of music like no other. One of the key things to happen at Fort Park in 2015 was the marketing campaign for the park's large-scale major dark ride, which was due to open the following year. It all started when construction walls were put up at the site with the words, the island landscape is changing. Due to the similarities between this logo and the London Underground logo, fans began speculating what the new dark ride would be themed to. This speculation was further fuelled by the application of more planning documents to the Runnymede Council, detailing what the ride would be like. Interestingly, in these plans it was revealed the ride's codename was Project Whitechapel, or WC16, and that a large watchtower was due to be built in the ride's plaza. 
Construction for Project Whitechapel went on throughout 2015, with the main building going vertical in August of that year. Later the following month, the ride's construction walls were then changed again to display the Minds Wanted marketing. In conjunction with this, the website mindswanted.co.uk was also set up at this point. On this website, several video teasers were posted in which fans had to locate and enter a clue which would allow them to find out the ride's secrets first. One of these main secrets was revealed on October 25th when it was shown that Darren Brown, the UK illusionist, was in some way involved in the project. 2016 was a very big year for the Fort Park Resort, however, it didn't get off to the best of starts with the announcement that Logger's Leap, the park's beloved log flume ride, would not be opening for the 2016 season. Due to the popularity of this ride, this was upsetting news for many people. Some small new additions to the park in 2016 included the Nitrogeni food stand located underneath Nemesis Inferno's first drop and also the introduction of two new areas to the park, these being Old Town and the Jungle. This was a very welcomed addition as fans have been wanting distinct themed areas to return to the park for many years. Now onto the biggest thing to happen at Fort Park in 2016, that's right, Project WC16. After many months of the Minds Wanted competition running, each clue was slowly revealing more and more about the ride. On the 17th of January, the name of the ride was then revealed for the first time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please mind the gap between the train and the platform edge. This is the suspended service from Thorpe Park Junction. All aboard Darren Brown's ghost train. Prepare to embark on the one-way journey to... No return trains are made. Then, on February the 9th, Four Park uploaded this video, revealing all of the clues in the competition so far, which left many fans disappointed after spending months trying to figure out the clues for themselves, only for the park to reveal all but the final clue a week before the competition was due to end. On the 15th of February, the competition did then come to an end, and at this point, fans were just excited for the park to open so that they could see the ride's construction up close. In March this became possible when the park did open for the 2016 season and at the ghost train site their entrance sign had been put into place advertising the ride's opening date as the 6th of May. Some eagle eyed fans even managed to spot one of the train carriages ready to be put inside the building. Towards the end of March the ghost train shop was then opened and was dubbed as Merlin's best themed shop featuring some really cool theming items as well as selling a lot of unique merchandise for the ride. Also at this point, as a promotion for the ride, Fort Park announced that they would sell 1,871 tickets for 12 pence, the equivalent of a shilling, on March the 25th at 9am. However, by 8.50am, all of the tickets had already sold out. Matters were then made worse when a Twitter account named at Fort Rock tricked people into believing a further 1,871 tickets would be released at 12pm as an apology for the initial mistake. This whole situation made a lot of people very mad at the park. Ultimately though, the following month, Fort Park came out with an official statement and ended up selling treble the initial amount of discounted tickets as an act of goodwill. This hiccup, however, was only the start of the issues the ghost train would encounter over the following months. As on April the 27th, just over a week before the ride was due to open, Fort Park announced the ride would be delayed until further notice. This led to many upset fans who now had to wait even longer to find out what would happen within the ride. The forums were going absolutely crazy and the hype was increased even more on May 14th, a week after the ride was due to open with the reveal of the ride's official TV advert. Let me take you on a journey. journey. 
that will make you wonder, is your mind playing tricks on you, or are my tricks playing on your mind? A ghost train like no other, no other. My ghost train. Darren Brown's ghost train only at Fort Park Resort. A whole month after the ride was due to open, in early June, there was still no official opening date. It was around this point, however, where rumours of soft and soft openings began very prevalent, with photos like this emerging almost daily in online forums. These very exclusive and small rehearsals continued right throughout June, with most of those lucky enough to ride having to sign non-disclosure agreements, stating they wouldn't talk about what happened on the ride. Then the day finally came. On July the 8th, with no big opening ceremony or prior warning, the ride was opened. The website now displayed the ride as open and the ride's advert was re-uploaded to say open now. And that concluded quite possibly one of the messiest opening periods of any UK theme park ride. Towards the end of 2016, after looking at the pros and cons of the current state of the ghost train, Fort Park then began teasing a new terrifying destination arriving in 2017. The 2017 Fort Park season was set off to a great start, with two brand new rides being added to the resort, these being Timber Tug and Lumber Jump, which were both relocated from Weymouth Sea Life to the Old Town area of the park. Both of these rides opened during the Easter period. Along with these new additions, 2017 also saw the minor refurbishment of one of the park's classic attractions, this being Rumba Rapids, which went from having a vibrant green and purple colour scheme to more of a yellow toned down colour palette. Many trees were also cut down and made to look burnt, and the classic Rumba Rapids music was changed. It's believed that this refurbishment was done to make Rumba Rapids fit in better with the jungle themed area of the park. In fact, in 2017, Fort Park further developed the themed areas of the park with new area logos and signs. Also this year, Fort Park completely overhauled the themed music you hear at the park along with the help of German music company, Imascore. This was a welcome change as for the past few years, chart music was still being played at various points around the park. With these new additions and changes to the park, 2017 unfortunately saw the closure of one of the most popular flat rides at the park, Slammer. After many periods of downtime over the past few years, in April, Fort Park replied to a guest stating Slammer would remain closed for the entirety of the 2017 season. A month later, they then officially confirmed that Slammer would be leaving the resort for good after its 12 year residency. The biggest new addition to the Fort Park resort in 2017 was the terrifying new destination to the Ghost Train which was first teased towards the end of 2016. After applying for planning permission for an extension to the current Ghost Train shop, fans were speculating as to what this new destination would be. The first piece of video marketing the park did was this video which, spoiler warning, contains a big jump scare. The park received quite a bit of backlash for this advert and it was reportedly banned for being too scary. On January 18th though, the park then announced the name of this new addition. We at the Durham Brown Ghost Train Company would like to announce a major train refurbishment program is currently taking place. And in response to your feedback, we are working very hard, 24 seven, to make your journey deeper, darker. and of course, more convenient. Darren Brown's Ghost Train, Rise of the Demon. After delaying announcing when the Ghost Train would reopen, finally, in mid-March, the park then advertised that its world exclusive launch would be on March the 31st. Four days before the opening, the new advert for the ride was then released. Who's 
Don't worry. This is your stop. Rise of the Demon on Darren Brown's Ghost Train, only at Fort Park Resort. And then on March 31st, just as promised, Darren Brown's Ghost Train, Rise of the Demon, was officially opened. Just a warning, there will be spoilers for Rise of the Demon if you haven't yet experienced it. This new version of the ride was focused on fixing many of the flaws of the original Ghost Train, including new VR sections to replace the seemingly never-ending green smoke section from the original ride. The main new addition, however, was a brand new finale set in a fake gift shop, taking place where the ride's baggage room once was. This scene featured a demon, which is actually an actor in a suit, that would enter the shop for a brief few seconds before seemingly disappearing into thin air. The 2018 Fort Park season was kicked off with many zombie-related teasers, the first of which showed what appeared to be a walker roaming the exterior of the Fort Park Resort. Upon analysing the glitch effect used in the video, fans discovered that there was a secret message suggesting that there would be an announcement on March the 5th that would somehow be linked to X. Just over two weeks later, however, Fort Park then put out this post suggesting that this announcement would be moved forward. Then, as announced, a week later, Fort Park then announced that 2018 would be the year of the Walking Dead. Even after this big announcement, however, Fort Park continued to tease the headline attraction of the Year of the Walking Dead, with several accounts, including myself, noticing several strange happenings in and around the park. Then, on March the 20th, 2018, Fort Park then revealed that the headline of the Year of the Walking Dead would be The Walking Dead The Ride. This would be located in the iconic building previously home to X and X No Way Out. Very sad. Fast forward though to March 18th, when Fort Park's annual pass day was then cancelled due to snow, with Fort Park's sister park, Alton Towers' brand new roller coaster Wicker Man's opening day also being cancelled this weekend due to the weather. Despite this, throughout the next week, Fort Park continued building hype for the Year of the Walking Dead with the help of a look-alike Negan character. Little pig, little pig, let me in. Then, on March 25th, the park officially opened for the 2018 season, with The Walking Dead The Ride still looking like a construction site. It doesn't look too Four ready. Third. Four days later though, The Walking Dead The Ride was ready and officially opened at its press event to good reviews. The dead, they walk the island. Ride to survive or walk with the dead. The Walking Dead, the ride at Thorpe Park Resort. Pay for a day, come back free for a year. Fun fact myself and Kieran actually to this day have cameos in The Walking Dead, the ride's pre show. Now, of course, with The Walking Dead, the ride coming to the park in 2018, that meant we had to say goodbye to one of the best rides to ever be at the Thorpe Park Resort X. And fans were able to do so at a special annual pass event called. Expo 2018. This was an incredible event held in the Lakeside Marquee that was entirely dedicated to the pyramid of dreams that was X. Within the Expo, there were several theming pieces and original photos from the ride from when it was X No Way Out. There were also talks from Memories of Fort Park who discussed the history of the ride and John Burton who discussed the transformation the pyramid had gone through to turn it into The Walking Dead The Ride. The only issue of this annual pass event was the fact that the Walking Dead the ride didn't actually open due to technical difficulties. Right, unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to be opening tonight. A few days later, though, on April the 24th, the park put on another event based around the Walking Dead the ride, as they opened it for a midnight riding session to a thousand fans who could all attend for free as long as they dressed up as zombies. Fast forward now to May, when the other aspects of the Year of the Walking Dead came into place, with firstly, Apocalypse Weekends. Survivors, welcome to Apocalypse Weekend at Thorpe Park Resort. 
This consisted of six QR codes hidden around the park, which once all scanned allowed you to get your hands on an exclusive pop badge and a free return ticket to the park. Also in May came one of the most intense horror experiences in Fort Park's history with the Walking Dead Living Nightmare, Extreme. This experience saw the park's Walking Dead Living Nightmare horror maze open throughout May half term. However, there were now up to 30 actors in there at any one time. More intense scare tactics were implemented and several scenes were adapted to increase the chance of guests being split up on their own. This was certainly not an experience for the faint-hearted, but will go down as one of the best horror maze experiences to ever be at the Fort Park Resort. Summer 2018 was certainly a busy time at the park, with another two Year of the Walking Dead events taking place. One of these being 10pm summer openings. The other event was Zombie Hunt. This was a live action laser shooting experience that took place down the pathway that runs parallel to Monk's Walk. It was completely free and a very comical and fun experience for the entire family. Other notable things that happened in summer 2018 include the opening of Saw Alive and the partial opening of Living Nightmare again while Saw Alive was having a few technical issues. Also, how can we forget about the great Pop Swap where fans could exchange their pop badges and even get their hands on some exclusive ones. Another major event to take place during the summer was Love Island Lates. This summer is about to get even hotter. Experience Love Island with Love Island Lace. Only at Thorpe Park Resort. During this time, the hit ITV reality show took over Amity Beach, with sets from the show being recreated, along with guest appearances from past islanders. The 2019 Fort Park season was the resort's 40th year of operation. Over the winter period in anticipation for this birthday year, many small touches and refurbishments were made around the park. Oh my god, all the theory! <laughs> What the hell? I fully thought you'd just move that screen over there, but it's a completely new one. Completely new screen. It's been filled in. So it's... I don't know, do you know the details of why they did it? I think it's just easy access to columns. Another one of these new additions was the park-wide integration of Coca-Cola Freestyle, making Fort Park the first UK theme park to have this technology. Also during the winter period, Fort Park teased what this year's new addition would be with their new Infinity Logo style of branding. They then revealed that these new additions would be Jungle Escape, Game Effects, and Bouncezilla. On February 20th came a very sad announcement. The park's beloved log flume, Logger's Leap, which hadn't been operating since the end of 2015, would officially close for good. With this announcement, the park promised an online auction in which fans of the ride could get the chance to purchase their own piece of Logger's Leap memorabilia. This auction, however, never went ahead and was never mentioned again by the park. Then, on March 23rd, Fort Park opened for its annual pass day and for the first time, the park's brand new roaming actors could be seen. These roaming actors took many forms throughout the 2019 season, from jungle explorers to cowboys to game show hosts and even to a friendly zombie family. These actors were always full of energy and were great to bump into whenever at the park. The first new addition to come to the park in 2019 was Game FX. This event saw the Lakeside Marquee be transformed into a gamer's paradise with an array of old school game consoles mixed in with new releases. As well as this, there were paid extra esports tournaments and VR experiences for guests to try out. This fun little event took place from April the 6th to May 31st. Next up, we saw the opening of Jungle Escape. This would be the park's second attempt at an upcharge escape room after the Fright Nights only attraction, Containment. Jungle Escape was located within the building previously occupied by horror mazes such as The Freezer, The Asylum, Studio 13 and Vulcan Peak, and in prior seasons, the I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here maze. Within Jungle Escape, two teams would be put up against each other to complete challenges and puzzles in order to escape the clutches of the Huntsman and his comrades. The next new addition for the 2019 season was the incredible Bouncezilla, the bouncy castle that bites back. This 90 meter inflatable course, complete with custom audio, was a great addition for kids and grown-ups alike. On hotter days, water guns were even used by the staff to help keep guests as cool as possible. 
Fast forward now to the weekend of the 24th of May, when Fort Park officially turned 40 years old. To celebrate this, the park released a special selection of retro merchandise, as well as specialty 40th birthday food products. Another big birthday that the park celebrated this weekend was Saw the Ride, which turned 10 years old on March the 13th, 2019. This weekend of the 24th of May, however, also saw Saw-themed actors added back to the Saw the Ride Plaza in Q-Line, just like in the ride's opening year. Another event that took place this weekend was the Lunar Cinema. This consisted of an external events company that for an upcharged price screened Back to the Future and Bohemian Rhapsody underneath Stealth. Moving now towards the end of summer, when the park's advertised MTV Nights event was repurposed into a daytime MTV stage located by Stealth once before then being moved next to Tidal Wave for the remainder of its shows. And that right there folks brings us to the end of this episode and the entire series of the past decade at Fort Park. I really hope you have all enjoyed this series, I've had so much fun making it and I'm very excited to start working on similar short video series in the future. So be sure to subscribe to be notified when they get released. And otherwise, thank you all very much for watching, my name is Jack Silkstone, goodbye. Hey. Nah, I ain't feeling that, you never proved me back You never did jack, hold that I think I'm way, but I'm definitely not sure I'm never washed up, I know I got more Painting pictures with words, top drawer Trying to find a middle ground is a lost cause yeah.